number. Okay? Hari Om, let's start with the prayer. Om Samastha Jana Kalyane Niratam Karunamayam Namami Chinmayam Devam Sadgurum Brahma Vidvaram Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Mardhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Bande Jagadgurum Tomeva Mata Chapitatvameva Tomeva Bandhuscha Sakatvameva Tomeva Vidya Dravidam Tomeva Tomeva Sarvam Amadeva Deva Tomeva Sarvam Deva Deva Are you So Acharya is analyzing what is bondage and how does it come? So Konama Bandha Kadamesha Agataha From where it came or how did it come? So in that in response to that What's bondage is, is due to Ajasa. So why did Ajasa come into picture? Ajasa means superimposing something other than what it is. And how does that arise? And that's how, so starting from say what was there before is only pure Satchidananda Swarupam. And in that we are talking about creation which is not really there but appears to be there and all these things come under that category as per the Advaita. So we go into the analysis of more detail in terms of how pure, absolute, uninterrupted this Satchidananda Swarupam appears as a many and what is the cause for the ignorance that was the ignorance is is a basic fundamental problem and how does it come, how does it arise is being explained again. In the sloka 141 we are going to take, he says, Acharya says, Akhanda nitya advaya bodha shaktya spuranta matmana mananta vaibhavam samavrunotya vruti shakti resha tamo mai rahuri varka binnam so he said, let's repeat again. Akhanda nitva dvaya bodha sektya Spuranta matma namananta vaibhavam Samavrunotya vruti sekti resha Tamo mai rahuri varka binnam So akhandam nityam So these are the attributes of the totality is being pointed out. What was there is only this. So that is Brahman because that which is akhandam Akhanda means unbroken, that means there is no differences of any kind in that. So Khanda means a parts and there are no parts because this is the according to the, the Advaitic tradition in the pure consciousness that existence there cannot be any part because it's infinite. Infinite by definition cannot have any finite parts, finite parts cannot become an infinite. Infinite is infinite, infinite is a word itself is it's not finite. So there is no finiteness, khandas in that. So akhandam, nichyam, that which is always eternal. Because if it is beginning and end, then it cannot be nichyam. And what is beginning and end is always a, 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 a part or is always a finite things can have anichyam. But the infinite cannot have the beginning and end. Now udeti, na astameti. Neither it has a beginning nor it end. Udeti means the arising or disappearing. Because if something arises, then question is asked, how do you know? So there must be some conscious entity having a knowledge of the arising of some conscious entity. And that conscious entity who is aware of the arising and so on, that should be independent of any rising and, and something. And that's what we are talking about. That is Nityam. So Advayam, Advayam means non-duality. So it is not a, the, the Advaita philosophy is not a, a monoism, it is Advaitam. That means whatever I see is Dvaitam is not really true. That means it's not absolutely true, although I am seeing it. So perceptually it is true, experientially it is true, transactionally it is true, but still the absolute point it is not really true. So we are talking about ontological level, 
ontological means the the order of reality we have absolute reality and we have a relative reality and even in visistha dvaita same thing is accepted although not implied directly there the brahman is having a parts and at the same time these parts do not affect him because there is a transcendental nature of ramayana Ram, narayana and that transcendental is unaffected by any of these parts and that is exactly what it mean by nirguna brahman so therefore although they use this different words but it has to be implied because that absolute which is un uninterrupted that nitya swarupam and that is essentially unaffected by anything inside apparent apparent things are therefore it is advayam only in spite of the duality what is there is is one and in the case of vishishta dvaita it's virat swarupam it is one essence but all having internal parts whereas the in advaita the internal parts are not really real it's only apparently real but what is there is only pure unadulterated the pure consciousness which is nirgunam so here is giving the first what is the nature of that and how does it get covered as though there is an ignorance that's what is the cause has to be understood so akandam nichyam advayam bodha roopa shakti hi spuritam so it is of the bodha roopam shaktya it is of the nature of the pure knowledge itself that is satyam gyanam anantam brahma so gnana swarupam it is a swarupa lakshana and we discuss swarupa lakshana is it is a necessary and sufficient to say what it is it's not an attributive it is of its no nature itself and that's called the the bodha roopa shakti hi so question that was raised is satyam gyanam or satchidananda are attributes of the brahman they cannot be attributes of the brahman why they cannot be attributes of the brahman because that's a criticism of the other philosophers because this satyam sat because he is a saguna brahma when he defined as satchit ananda they are considered as attributes of the brahman but they cannot be attributes existence cannot be attribute of the brahman because existence is an attribute then attribute has to be different from the locus that's what an attribute is when it's a blue lotus blueness is different from lotusness so that's why we call it an attribute therefore if if the existence is an attribute of brahman then brahman should be different from existence and only thing that is different from existence is only non existence so you cannot say existence is an attribute of non existence that's a that's a contradiction in terms therefore existence is itself is the attribute which is also same as essential swarupa lakshanam so actually it is swarupam therefore it's not an attribute it is intrinsic nature of brahman itself it exists and is infinite and scripture says it is of the nature of consciousness so consciousness is also infinite so therefore anything unconscious entity if i see it cannot be really real so therefore it's only ontological at a different degree of reality has to be understood as a basis because of the scripture says is satyam gnanam anantam or satchidanandam which is anantam infinite therefore they are intrinsic nature of brahman itself and therefore swaranti atmanam ananta vaibhavam it is that which is infinite glory is being displayed as though and that is the nature of the pure satchidanandam and sama avrunot runoti avruti shakti resha tamo mahi rahu rivarkaramba so this infinite which is satchidananda is as though covered by this mula vidya how say how does it cover tamo by tamo mai because of the tamo guna of the maya so we enter analyze that maya has three gunas this maya is same as prakruti prakruti has three gunas tamo guna raja guna and sattva guna the tamo guna aspect of the prakruti covers as though i say it covers as though this brahman and therefore when it covers that means i do not know the nature of brahman and therefore once i discover then i project something other than what it is as the truth so where why does it cover how does it come how does the agnana come because of the covering of the brahman by tamoguna 
So that is the essence of the Tamoguna means it is that because of which ignorance is covering the Brahman. And the example here is Tamo Mahi Rahuri Varka Binnam. So it is similar to Rahu swallowing the sun. So according to the, the, the Vedantic the classical, the Indian mythology, there is a, the, the eclipse is explained as though Rahu swallowing the sun and the moon. And when it swallows and then Rahu doesn't have the bottom, it only swallows and it comes out, again the sun is coming back. So the eclipse is, there is only time spatter as it swallows and that's what essentially eclipse is explained. Even from the modern understanding that it is nothing but the shadow of the moon on the, on the, on the sun is what we call it as a solar eclipse or the, the shadow of the earth on the moon is what is called lunar, lunar eclipse. So it is essentially the shadow. Shadow is causes darkness. It's the same statement, but it is only that is only a picturized in terms of a mythological story. It is essentially a something is covering for me not to see. So the question that was raised is how can ignorance cover Brahman? So this is a fundamental question of other philosophers and they use this Puro Paksha and the, the Ramanuja in his uh, Sri Bhashya, he criticizes Advaita. Before that Bhaskara has criticized and the, the formula, formally the Ramanuja in his Sri Bhashya of Brahma Sutra, he raises seven untenables against Avidya of, of Advaita Vedanta. For them, there is a Maya, so they also agreed that because that says scripture says Maya, but Maya is a Parameshwara Shakti and it has only projecting power, but not Avarana, covering power. So there, they also say it is Maya Abhyak Shena Prakutihi Suyati Sacharacharam. That's what Krishna says, in the my adhyaksha, the whole, this maya is projecting or the prakriti is projecting the varieties of things. So projecting power of maya is accepted by all other the darshanikas, that is philosophers. Whereas the covering power is not accepted by them. But what is the covering power? Covering power is I do not know myself. So even in, in the Visishta Advaita, the jivas, which is beginningless ignorance is being covered. What is that covering? There is an ignorance. What it covers, of course, is the jiva's understanding that I am a, a dependent. I am depend on the on the Lord. He does that knowledge is covered, and he thinks he is independent. So that swadantra bhava comes for the jiva because of not knowing the truth, and that is avidya. So avidya goes away only by surrendering to the Lord that I am dependent on you, dasoham, and that's how the saranagati is a means of liberation. But in any, in any philosophy, there is avidya in one form or other. But here avidya is, is what? That I do not know Brahman because I am Brahman, but I do not know Brahman. The question that we going posed by Bhagavan Ramanuja is, who has the avidya? Does the Brahman has avidya or jiva has avidya? Avidya means ignorance. Who has the avidya? How can this ignorance cover Brahman? Brahman is infinite and how can this ignorance can cover Brahman? So here we have to understand clearly the ontological aspect that means the, 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 the degree of reality has to be clearly understood. Otherwise Advaita will be misunderstood. From the point of locus of Advaita, according to Ramanuja, neither Brahman can be locus of Avidya or the Jiva can be locus of Avidya. We will just address this a little bit to understand clearly what are the objections so that we will not have that objections when somebody raises these questions. Number one, Brahman cannot have Avidya. That means the, the uh, Brahman is infinite and he is of the nature of knowledge itself and how can ignorance cover that pure infinite knowledge and that is impossible and if it covers then this is much more powerful than even Brahman which is not possible also. So ignorance, locus for ignorance cannot be Brahman. 
But if you say jiva is a locus of ignorance and then the jiva itself is another problem because jiva itself is a product of ignorance. So it was there before jiva is created. So how can jiva be locus of ignorance? So therefore that question also cannot be clearly. So neither jiva can be locus of avidya or brahman can be a locus of avidya. So therefore the both cannot be possible. That's all the, the criticism of Bhagavan Ramanuja in his Sri Bhashya in this of the Brahma Sutra. So this is essentially now ontological factors, the degree of reality. So from Advaita point also there is no, no covering, nothing can be from the pure absolute Satchidananda Swarupam, there is no ignorance even. So from that point, neither there is ignorance, neither is a jnanam, neither is a creation, because infinite cannot undergo any creation. So creation itself is not there, there is no, no jiva, there is no world and all that, all are product of essentially apparent creation, but not real creation, because real creation there cannot be, because if there is something created out of Brahman, Brahman itself gets a modification and infinite cannot undergo any modification. So from the absolute point, this is how. So how do you justify it? That's why scripture itself provides how, do I, how it became many. So therefore that's the example the scripture provides as just as gold becoming into many. So gold still remain as a gold but it's only Nama Rupam. That means the names and form still remain as a gold but varieties of things are there and that's what is essentially a creation. Creation is only apparent. It's called Vivartha Vada. Vivartha Vada means it's only apparently created. Just as the ring, a bangle and necklace all are names and forms with these attributes each different from other at the same time it is nothing but the gold only. Gold has not really become anything. Gold remains as gold yet there are varieties of names and forms. So from the point of gold there is no creation, there is no becoming anything. Hence Krishna says, vidam sarvam sarva bhutani. All beings are in me. And the next sloka itself he says, Najamastani bhutani. There are no beings in me at all. So he is contradicting himself in the very next sloka. So he says, how can he contradict? It's not a contradiction, but from the, to from the point of totality, it's essentially we are talking about the absolute point. There is no creation. Najamastani bhutani. At the same time, at the point of relative, says Mastan Sarva Bhutani. So all beings are in me at the same time, no beings are in me. All ornaments are in me, at the same time no ornaments in me. In me. So scripture itself is providing, because there is another criticism of Bhagavan Ramanuja that there is no Pramana for it. Pramana is, he says how it became many, that itself, but many became taking itself as an individual, then that is a problem. Just as the, in the dream state, I take myself, I am different from the creation that I have created by my own self. So therefore, there is experiential anubhava that justifies, in fact, is that ignorance is there and ignorance can be removed once I understand the truth behind it. So once I am awakened to the highest state of understanding, then all the dream creation of plurality is becomes nullified. In the same way, I had to realize you in the waking state itself what is the absolute nature of that reality. So here Tamogunam is one that is causing. So these explanations are provided for the one who sees the plurality. So from the, from the absolute point no explanation is required and needed also. So because it is pure Satchidananda Swarupam, so therefore even the ignorance that I thought I had is never was there before. That will be the knowledge of a person who has realized the Brahman. So he is called Panditaha. Na Anusochanti Panditaha. For him there is no reason for him to cry because he is eternally present in everything. So there is nothing get lost in that process. So therefore for him nothing will no other creation itself is not really real. So why should I cry for something not real? So therefore here the Tamo Gunam, Tamo Mahi Rahu Rivark Vayunam. So this Rahu as though catching here, so all these explanations of Prakriti creation is only explaining something which is not really there, 
therefore maya itself is that which is not really there is explained to explain what is there because i am observing the creation so the question and the teaching is only for the person who thinks that there is a creation and who thinks that i am only local jiva and who thinks the world is different from him and the one says i do not know that i am everything also to him only this teaching but from the point of absolute truth you don't need neither there is an agnani or a gyani so it's beyond everything else also and this example is essentially is given in the, in the, in the sloka in terms of 144 the the bhagavan the acharya says banu prabha sanjanita bhrapanti hi banu prabha sanjanita bhrapanti hi banum tirodhaye yatha bijumbate banum tirodhaye yatha bijumbate atmodita ham kruti hi atmatatvam atmodita ham kruti hi atmatatvam tatha tirodhaye bijumbate svayam तथा तिरोदाय विजुमृते स्वयं से इन एसेंस इट सेज दैट भानु प्रभा संजनिता अभ्रम अभ्रपंक्ति ही द द क्लाउड्स दैट आर बोर्न आउट ऑफ सन बिकॉज़ ऑफ द सन ओनली क्लाउड्स आर आर बीइंग अराइजिंग एंड द क्लाउड्स दैट आर केम बिकॉज़ ऑफ द सन ओनली एंड देन भानुम तिरोदाय यथा विजुमृते एंड दोस क्लाउड्स आर कवरिंग द सन so those how did this uh, the clouds came because of the sun only and those clouds are now covering the sun and the fellow underneath the clouds and says that i am not able to see the sun because it is the clouds are covering the sun so atmo the ahankruti in the same way ahankara the ego born out of from the brahman and covers the brahman as though that it's you cannot see the reality because i am taking unreality as real or transactional reality as real so there therefore tatho tirodaya vijumbate swayam not only i do not know by i take firmly rooting that i am this and then all my activities run around revolve around it and that's what is going to be explained in terms of how so this explanation in of the clouds covering the sun is a clear example where the clouds born out of sun covering the sun and when the wind is removes the clouds and what is required then is the self shining sun is revealed by itself i don't have to do anything all i have to do is remove the obstruction remove the clouds by the wind but actually the clouds cannot really cover the sun clouds are small compared to the sun itself even the earth itself is so small in the solar system but at the same time the one who is under this under the spell of this cannot see cannot see the sun but how am i able to see the clouds because of the sun only in the sunlight i am seeing the sun at the same time i cannot this sun see the sun why because clouds are covering the sun how do you know because i can see the clouds how do you see the clouds in the sunlight only this is all how do i know i am ignorant because i am conscious of the ignorance of myself also that it means i am conscious of my ignorance that means consciousness illumining the